Let's take a look at some of the questions that you did in the practice checkpoint test. Okay, we're going to take a look at number one. Study the expression 2x squared plus 5x. Find the term that will make this expression a perfect square trinomial. So in other words, what you are being asked to do here is to complete the square. Okay, so to make it a perfect square trinomial, you're going to complete the square for this expression. So we have 2x squared plus 5x. We know that we can only complete the square when the coefficient of the squared term is positive 1. So we need to take out 2 as a common factor. That leaves us with x squared plus 5 over 2x. If we now want to find the term that completes the square, we need to take the coefficient of the middle term, we need to halve it, and we need to square it. So that gives us 5 over 4. 5 over 4 squared is 25 over 16. And we now need to just multiply the 2 back into the bracket. So that gives us plus 5x. And 25 over 16 times 2 is 25 over 8. So the term that completes the square for this trinomial will be 25 over 8. In number B, we are now asked to factorize this expression. So 2x squared plus 5x plus 25 over 8. So we need to do the process again. Take the 2 out as a common factor. Plus 25 over 16. And now that bracket is a, com uh, is a perfect square. So it will factorize into a binomial squared. The middle term will be positive because we want our outers and our inners to add up to positive. And the square root of 25 over 16 is 5 over 4. Okay, the next question we're going to take a look at is number 2c. Number 2c, we have an equation with a um, third. So the first step is to square both sides of that equation in order to get rid of that square root sign. So square, squaring a square root just leaves us with 2m plus 12. Remember that when you square a binomial, it's actually equal to m plus 2 times m plus 2. So it will be m squared plus 4m plus 4. Now we can get it into standard form. So m squared 4m minus 2m is positive 2m. 4 minus 12 is negative 8. If we factorize that, we get m plus 4, m minus 2. So therefore m is equal to negative 4 or m is equal to positive 2. Now, whenever you solve an, an equation by squaring or cubing or, or, or any operation of that nature, you must check your solution because in squaring it, you could have introduced the possibility of a solution that isn't actually true. So if we just check the solutions here, if we substitute m is negative 4 back into the equation, you'll have in the original equation, so 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Negative 8 add 12 is positive 4. The square root of 4 is 2. If we substitute into the right-hand side, we'll have negative 4 plus 2, which is negative 2. And 2 and negative 2 are not the same. So left-hand side does not equal the right-hand side, so therefore m does not equal negative 4. Okay, you cannot say that m equals negative 4 is a valid solution. If you substitute 2 into the equation, 2 times 2 is 4, add 12 is 16, square root of 16 is 4, and 2 plus 2 is 4. So m equals 2 is a valid solution. The left-hand side does equal to the right-hand side. Okay, let's take a look at number 2d. In number 2d, we have a repeated component of y squared minus 3y. We need to therefore substitute y squared minus 3y with something else because if we were to multiply by y squared minus 3y, we would land up with y to the power of 4, which would mean that our equation, um, we can't solve it as a quadratic because it's no longer a quadratic equation. So we're going to let k or any variable that you choose equal to y squared minus 3y. So we land up with 2 equals 1 over k plus k. Multiply through by the LCD, which in this case is k, and into standard form, we'll have 0 is equal to k squared minus 2k plus 1. If we factorize that, 
we this is actually a perfect square so it'll be k minus 1 and k minus 1 so we only have to consider one bracket if we just substitute the um, value back that we because remember we're not solving for k we substitute um, solving for y squared minus 3y so we will be able to say that y squared minus 3y minus 1 is equal to 0. Now that does not factorize y squared minus 3y minus 1 so we need to use our quadratic formula so it will be negative b, which will be negative negative 3, plus or minus the square root of negative 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 1 all over 2 times 1. And if you substitute those values into your calculator, y equal to 3 comma 3 or y equal to negative 0 comma 3. Okay, and then finally, the last question I want to take a look at is question 4. Show that negative 2x squared plus 11x equals to 12 has real, rational, unequal roots. Okay, so whenever you are asked to show that something has a particular nature of roots, remember that you are not being asked to solve this equation. You are just going to need to say what the roots will be like. And to do that, we use our discriminant, our delta. But before we can use delta, our equation must be in standard form. So we need to subtract 12 from both sides. Our discriminant is just that part of the quadratic equation that's going to tell us whether the roots will be rational, real, non-real, etc., etc., which is the bit underneath the square root sign, b squared minus 4ac. That gives us 11 squared minus 4 times negative 2 times negative 12. And if we calculate that value, we get 25. So therefore, delta is positive. 25 is also a rational number. So delta is an element of the rational set of numbers. In other words, it's a perfect square. So therefore, we can conclude from that, because delta is positive, we can say that the roots are real. Because delta is an element of the rational, we can say that the roots will be rational. And the only time the roots will be equal is if your delta value is equal to zero. So the moment your delta value is anything other than zero, your roots will be unequal.